Welcome back to the Bologna Motor Show special here on Overdrive. Now green is the theme of our times and it's also the main talking point of this motor show. Now the Smart 42 has just been showcased in Italy with electric propulsion. In tie-up with Enkel which is an electric provider here in Italy, main cities like Rome, Pisa, Milan will have charging points all over and this will be the preferred mode of transportation. At least that's what Daimler hopes. Nissan has set the tone for electric cars with its novel arrangement with the Israeli government where it will lease a fleet of electric cars for Tel Aviv backed up by charging and parking infrastructure. And now Smart has embarked on a similar program with Italian utility company Enel and the cities of Rome and Milan. But while being smart and eco-friendly might be the new direction for auto majors, let's not forget that Mercedes engines powered Lewis Hamilton to the Formula 1 World Championship. And of course, Mercedes' collaboration with McLaren extends beyond Formula 1 and to the McLaren-Mercedes SLR. Now, if it's all getting a bit too green for you, here's the SLR 722 GT. It competes in a one-make racing series, the SLR Trophy, for gentlemen racers. Basically, if you have a lot of money to blow up, you take part in this series. If you had a ton of cash to burn and racing isn't quite your scene, all you had to do was stop over at Bentley. The recession? What recession? This is the final edition of the Bentley Arnaud series. It gets a 6.75 litre twin turbo V8. It makes over 500 horsepower, has 1000 Newton meters of torque. This is a four-door luxury limousine, but it can crack 100 in five and a half seconds. It can do a top speed of 290 kmph. It costs an eye-watering 325,000 euros. Recession? Yeah, right. If Bentleys are a little too pipe and slippers for you, how about something with a little Italian flair? Hidden away in the corner of the show was a Scorpion, and this company's cars had a lot of sting up their tails. To me, right now, the Fiat 500 is the cutest car on sale. So how do you inject a bit of lunacy into a cute car? Well, you give it to the boys at Abarth and they go completely mad. This is the 500 Abarth Assetto Corse. It's a stripped out 500 that will compete in a one-make racing series. It will run alongside the WTCC and the Ferrari Challenge Stradale series. And you should see the finished car. That's how it looks like. Cute, yet utterly mad. Joining the Cinquecento Corse was another off-the-wall concept, made even more interesting because it had only two wheels. If you thought the Abbas brand of lunacy was restricted only to cars, think again. This is what they've done to the Yamaha FZ1. Right now, it's only a styling job, but it'll be on the market soon. And why Yamaha? Well, Valentino Rossi rides the Fiat Yamaha MotoGP bike. That's the association. But take heart. You don't have to be Valentino Rossi to pull hot chicks. There was an altogether more simple and elegant option available. Check out Alfa Romeo's Mito, designed in Milan and built in Torino. It's not just Ferrari and Lamborghini that make some gorgeous cars. Alfa Romeo, a quintessentially Italian brand, are also in the business of making some stunning eye candy, like this, the Mito and the 8C supercar. The Alfa 8C Competizione debuted at Bologna last year and is Alfa's first supercar in almost 15 years. It's completely carbon fibre, has a 4.7-litre V8 petrol that produces a kicking 450 horses and it sounds like a very, very angry horse at that. But as with all Alphas, it's the sensational styling that will make you all weak in the knees. Luca Di Mio is boss of Alfa Romeo and Abarth, two of Fiat's brands that are doing extremely well. Luca, welcome to Overdrive. The Mito, it has a lot of styling cues from the 8C. Is the 8C now the template for all of Alfa's design? Uh, absolutely, that's the idea. The idea is that we will take the 8C as a kind of blueprint of all future Alfa Romeo. And I think that uh, given, given, I'm not designers, but the designers uh, I think have worked pretty well because given the challenge of trying to recreate the, the, the soul and the, and, the, and the magic of the 8C on a, a small platform like this one was not an easy task. 
at the Meteor launch, you talked about bringing the brand Alfa Romeo into India. Are you progressing with that? Yeah, I mean, we're looking. There is still a lot of interest from our partners and our dealers on on, on that. We are working on it, but we, we I mean, you, we need also to have the the right range of cars to be able to offer to the consumer, especially to the, some of commercial entrepreneurs, it's a, a, a mandate and a business that is uh, you know worth investing in. Now, if Alpha and Abarth make it to India, like parent Fiat, they might share showroom space with Tata Motors. And at Bologna, it was Tata Electric making headlines. And no, we don't mean the Mumbai Electricity Company. In keeping with the green theme, Indian giant Tata Motors have on display the Indica Electric. Now, this is the first time this car is on display. Tata Motors have bought a sizable stake in a Norwegian company who specialize in electric vehicles. And that's produced the Indica and the Ace One Tanner. This one gets a 40 kilowatt motor that makes around 95 newton meters of torque. It has the claimed range of 200 kilometers and can do 0 to 60 in around 9 seconds. Developed by Maya Innovation, the Indica Electric will be launched in Europe in the middle of next year, while the Ace, which is slated for export to the United States, will also get the battery pack. If you're excited about the Indica Electric, well, don't be. This is a Europe-only product. Time for a quick commercial break here on this special episode of Overdrive. But when you're back, we'll have some more homegrown surprises for you.